What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, my Christian gangsters? I hope y'all are having an amazing day because I know I am. I mean, y'all, I just got off from work. It's still kind of, you know, a pretty good hour, so I'm not complaining. Still got my whole, not my whole day, but I have a partial of my day still open. So but before I decided to, you know, dive into some reading or whatnot, y'all, I'd go ahead and um, tell y'all the word, y'all. I got a quick question for you. Quick question for you. Did you pray today? Did you? <laughs> oh, Lordy. I know I did. Now, you know, if you didn't, it's okay. Because, you know, most of the time, because I'm not consistent with this always, but most of the time, I pray before I bring the word. So before I bring the word, I want to go ahead and just pray for a little bit. Let y'all be covered in Jesus' name and then we can get going. So bow your head and close your eyes and we can go ahead and get this thing done. Lord, I want to thank you for bringing us here together. Lord, I ask that you please just open our hearts, our minds, and our and our and our our ears, Lord, so that we can hear whatever you want us to hear, God, and that you let our hearts understand exactly what your words are saying to us, God. We want to dig a uh, dive deeper into your word, God, and understanding who you are and who your people were, God, and who it was that you was trying to bring to your kingdom, God. So please. Let us take the word and give it to other people, God, so that we can bring others closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, um, y'all, I'm going to try to jazz it up a little bit because I understand a lot of times I look like really, really serious in these videos. But I'm not, I want to say I'm not a serious person, but six times out of ten I am serious Four times out of ten, I'm not. So that's a, that's a pretty good percentage. Forty percent, I'm not serious. Um, or I try not to be because I don't I don't like dry people. So I'm not dry. You know, I got to butter up that toast. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna try to start uh, making my videos a little bit more, you know, interactive or funnier or whatnot to show you my other side because I know you guys when y'all see the videos that I do with Jay, I'm a lot. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm funny a little bit. I'm a lot funnier, um, a lot more carefree or whatnot. So I want you guys to actually see that part of me. So, yeah, I'm going to try to bring this, you know, and also try to give you the word as God give it to me. Because when God give me the word and, you know, I start reading the word, the word is not dry. It's not um, too serious to me. What it is, is like a, a movie that's going on in my head. So as I read it, I, I look at some of these characters as like, dang, y'all some gangsters, like, or y'all petty, or y'all really deserve that butt whipping. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how the word is given to me. So I want to try to give it to you like that. But I ain't going to try to keep y'all too long. But um, anyway, if you guys turn to Isra, that is E-Z-R-A. All right. Now, I didn't even know this book even existed. But when you read the Bible, when you actually go to the table of contents, you will see that there are there are books in this Bible that y'all ain't never known. It's because y'all ain't pick up that Bible. Y'all need to do better. And I know I needed to do better because when I looked at this, I said, what? What is this? But it actually turned out to be a really good book. But anyway, turn to Israel. At least that's how I pronounce it. The first chapter, the first verse, Um, I would recommend that you guys start there. Now, I'm not going to read it word from word again. I'm going to paraphrase it, okay? Because I ain't got time. But anyway, you can start there. And I would like to just go ahead and skip down to the second um, verse. And it says, this is what Cyrus, king, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdom of, of the earth. And he has appointed to me to build a temple for him. At Jerusalem in Ju Judah. Um, now I'm just going to start stop there because from there he heard from God. The king heard from God, and he's like, you know what, y'all, it is time to build, build for God, and that's exactly what um, that's exactly what he started to do. Now, if you go on to to verse five, it says, uh, then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Le uh, Levites. Everyone whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Now, that's verse five again in chapter one. And um, you can already see like God will give you 
things to do and he will put it on your heart. It's not for you to sit on the things that God is telling you to do. If you feel like God is telling you to do something for his kingdom in any type of capacity, whether that be music, whether that be an organization, whether that be writing or whether that be speaking or mentoring or things of that nature, God will put it on your heart yourself. He will put it on your heart himself. It shouldn't be something where you just, you know, Oh, I feel like doing this or I feel like doing that. It's like, no, God, I know for a fact God has told me to start building his kingdom in this way. So that's exactly what they went to go do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to skip a couple of chapters just to try to make it short and so I can get to the point. So now we was in chapter one. I need you to go need you to go to chapter four, chapter four. OK, now you go on to verse one of chapter four. It says, when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, they came to, now I, I don't know how to pronounce some of these words, but you can read it yourself, and to the heads of the family, and they said, let us help you build, because like you, we seek your God, and we have been sacrificing to him since the time of, whatever the king is, of Ezra, who brought us here. And then you go into verse 3, it says, but, is uh -huh. Joshua and the rest of the heads of the families of Israel answered, you have no part. You have no part with us in building a temple to our God. We alone will build it for God, for the Lord, the God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, commanded us. Now, I would like to stop really quickly to go ahead and give you an explanation of that. So while they're building now, these these people. Again, it's enemies when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin. So these were enemies that were coming up against these people who were building for the kingdom. And they already knew this. So when 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 the, when the, enemy, when the enemies decided to approach them, they already knew their intentions from the get go. So they're like, you know, they're trying to pretend the enemy's trying to pretend that they're trying to, you know, help out and everything. Um, but they caught that. It was like, you know what, bro, you better move out the way. That's my version. And that's what I hear. It's like. Bro, you better you better go ahead. I got this. You know, I'm going to build the kingdom just the way God had told me. And you, you know, you good. If you want to build something, go build something over there. But you ain't about to bring nothing over here. All right. So, but this is what happens. Now, I'm going to explain everything later. But if you go on to verse 4, chapter 4, verse, verse 4, it says, Then the peoples around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. They bribe officials to work against them and frustrate their plans during the entire reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, um, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So right there, I would just like to explain the fact that there will be people that will come into your life that will look like and talk like they're trying to help you build for the kingdom of God. But guess what? There's some fake people out there. You have to be very careful. Okay. These enemies knew exactly what they were doing. Now, if um, the, you know, the people of Judah and Benjamin had allowed them to come in, it's no telling what would have happened. But thank God, God gave them a discernment to know that they, these people were up to no good. And of course, when you call out the enemy, the enemy will try to come up against you in any way that they can. Now, you, like I said already, the people set out. The people, um, the enemies began to try to set out to discourage them from building. There will be people, the same people that are trying to help, help you build and you catch on to what they're trying to do. They will be the same people that would discourage you from the kingdom of God. Bro, y'all need to, y'all need to be careful on who y'all let into y'all lives, who y'all try to let on, on your plan, um, or the plan that God has for you. You need to be careful on who you say what to. Um, who you let help you and who you decide to let you, you know, who you decide to let see your plan. Okay. You need to be careful of it all because those same people will come up against you. Now, all through the book, if you continue to read it, they did not stop whatsoever. And that's why they, so they, that's why they're G's. These are real gangsters for Christ. Bro, you, you, you can go on and do what you're doing. You can try to discourage me, but I'm gonna keep doing what God has called me to do. And that's what, that's how we have to be in the kingdom. Number one, be careful who is trying to come up into your life and try to uh, allegedly help you with your plan. All right. Number two, don't be discouraged by these enemies because they see the great things that God has for you. So they just want to try to take it. And number three, 
Just keep your mind on God. Make sure you keep God at the forefront and that you're actually trying to build for him and only for him. Not for yourself and not for anybody else, but for strictly for God. What I really love about this book is that it has two types of people. The first type of people were the people that I was explaining in the beginning of um, Ezra or Israel, whatever you're trying to say, um, is where, you know, you're building for God and then there will be enemies or people that are going to try to stop you from building the kingdom by discouraging you or... <coughs> Or doing things to just try to come up against you in that manner. Then, then we got the second type of people that is explained in this book. All through this book, you're gonna see where um, there there is actually the man whose name is Ezra, and then he's going on behalf of his people because he see he sees that they're sinning. They just will not stop. They do it. They're doing everything against God. But you know what? I I kind of um, you know say that he kind of resembles Jesus in a way. In a way, he didn't sacrifice his life for us now. But I'm just saying, like, he went on the behalf at every chance. He went on the behalf of his people. He would repent for them. He would pray for them day in and day out, even though they didn't appreciate those prayers. They wanted to do what they wanted to do because they were sinners, um, and they just didn't care. They didn't care about God. They didn't care about um, the things that God has said and the things that would be against God's kingdom, right? So... Um, you know, you go through that, go through all those chapters, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. But then you go on to verse, um, to chapter 10. So in verse 1, you see that, um, um, chapter 10, verse 1, you see that Israel <coughs> is just weeping and throwing himself down before the house of God. And then there's the Israelites who start to, to see exactly what, what he's doing. And they're starting to, you know, feel bad a little bit. Then, um, in verse 2. That's where they start to speak out. And they said, they said, um, starting a little bit later in verse 2, it says, We have been unfaithful to our God by marrying for foreign women from the peoples around us. And then they start naming some of the things that they had done, um, basically repenting. And then it says, um, in verse 4, go down to verse 4, it says, Rise up. This matter is in your hands. We will support you. So take courage and do it. So, from there, they're, they're seeing that Israel is, is out there, put himself out there for them. Then they, they then they want to come on and, you know, start feeling bad and stuff after they see this man just crying out to God for them. They want to say all this of how what they did and all this and start repenting. And then they want to say basically that we support you. We su rise up because we support you. We support the things that you're doing. We support and we see what you're trying to do for our people. So we support you. And you know what Israel did? In verse 5, Israel rose up and put the leading priests and Levites and all Israel under oath to do what had been suggested. Suggested, and they took the oath. So not only did they accept, not only did they accept what Israel was doing at that time because they realized what they doing what they were doing was wrong but they also accepted Israel as as some type of leader they accepted what he, what he was doing they accepted what he was doing in the kingdom not only in the kingdom but for them and so those are, that's the second type of people that you will have you will have people that are seeing that you're doing great things for the kingdom see that you're praying for them even though they're still doing wrong and guess what then they'll begin to see <clears throat> That they need to not only accept you as as being somebody that's going on their beha their behalf, but also accept you as a person who is true, true in heart, true in honor, and true in the word of God. So they'll see they'll see the error in their ways, and then they'll be, want to actually support you. So, <clears throat> but <clears throat> hopefully, what I said makes sense. Um, I do understand that sometimes I might not explain things um, completely. Um, in a way that that will help you to understand what I'm saying, but guess what I always say Y'all better pick up this Bible and read it for yourself. I right? I'm just telling you what God gave me So that's how I feel. So that's what I read and that's what I tell y'all now God may tell you maybe telling you something different and it's okay God speaks to us in different ways. He shows us um, different things, different visions, um, give us different understanding so that we can reach different audiences, okay? 
So just because I received it this way doesn't mean that you're going to receive it in the same way. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Not always. Now, if you just completely off like the cliff, like you hanging and we're trying to throw you a line here. Either you need to take the line and listen to what I'm saying or <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. But you need to read this word <laughs> and get two or three Bibles if you need to cross reference. That's what I do, all right? I might as well say I got three Bibles. You know, this one's NIV and KJV. And then I got my good old faithful right here. The CEB, Common English Bible. So if you need to cross-reference, do it. Read it. Understand it. Pray on it. All right? So hopefully y'all learned something um, about being careful with who is trying to supposedly help you build for the kingdom of God. Um <clears throat> understand that there will be some people that are willing to help you and support you in the things that you're doing for them and for the kingdom so again again i hope that that helped you guys um that i educated you, you guys and promoted um reading some of some of the the books of the bible that a lot of preachers don't preach from i've never heard a preacher preach from this book never never even heard of it so why is it that you know we don't hear these things, but it's okay. That's what I'm here for. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope I hope y'all understood what I was saying, and I hope y'all um, just be encouraged, y'all. So keep building, regardless of what's what's going on, regardless if somebody is helping you or not. You got to be the one that's standing in, in, in the gap for other people, because <clears throat> all in all, the only thing that really matters is the kingdom of God and His people. So. You can't be trying to build stuff, you know, to get results. You got to build it because it's pleasing to God. So, with that, y'all, like I always say, there is power, purpose, and prosperity in your obedience. So, please, please, please do what you need to do for the kingdom um, because there's a purpose in it. Somebody is always attached to your obedience, y'all, and attached to your purpose because when you fulfill your purpose, everybody else... There will be some people that will see it, be inspired by it, and then pursue their own purpose. All right? So there is power in it because that's one more person that's getting closer to God. Purpose in it, just like I said, when you pursue yours, then you'll promote all this, others to pursue their own. And there's prosperity in it because then <clears throat> when you get into the kingdom, y'all, God can do nothing but bless you in it because he sees that you're living for him and only for him and not for the enemy. So, y'all, with that, pick up your word to get today, pray today, and guess what? Be blessed in Jesus' name, y'all. So, I hope I was a little bit more funny. I don't know. I'm trying to liven it up. Um, but, yeah. So, with that, um, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Be real.